So good morning, everybody. I'm Mike Nodley with uh, with iTech, and uh, this is my friend um, Nicole Ranchetti from um, from DSD, and we are very excited to show you um, uh, some things with um, generic inquiries, uh, specifically some ideas for how to uh, take uh, GIs to the next level. Um, so I'm going to start out by thanking Nicole for her session yesterday. It was um, it was lovely. Um, I really liked it, uh, especially because GIs are are so fundamental to Acumatica. You made it uh, safe to uh, to wade in there. So thank you for that. Yeah, thanks, Mike. And I mean, as I sort of said yesterday, you know, generic inquiries are really such a foundation for everything that we do within in, within Acumatica from like those primary lists to the data views and dashboards. Um, not even just what I showed, but you know, if anybody also caught Tim's session too, you know, generic inquiries are really the basis for a lot of what we're doing inside of Acumatica. Um, but they can also even just from a standpoint of uh, outside of reporting, they can also enhance business processes too. Right, so, um, so something like the uh, collections, the receivables collections process? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I know there's a lot of cool ISV solutions out there for, for some of those things as well, but there's a lot of really basic things that you can do inside of Acumatica, like I think we're going to run through today. Let's... Um... Let's let, let's talk about the uh, this uh, customer summary that's uh, baked into the, um, the, the the demo data. Yep, that's definitely one of my favorites, um, and it looks like Mike has it favorited as well. So, a <laughs> little bit of a pun there. Um, I like the the aging, you know, that we have inside of Acumatica, but this is just a really nice summary to look at um, as far as seeing overall information as to what's going on with that particular customer. Um, so and with this aging, right, Mike, you can use a few clicks to get to the invoice detail as well. Is that is that correct? Yeah, so you could uh, obviously drive down from the customer, open the customer link um, from there, go to inquiries and go to customer details. Mm -hmm. um, but it would certainly be nicer if just by clicking on the customer, we get straight to customer details. So let's make a quick change. So we're going to go into Nicole's favorite place, which is edit generic inquiry. So as Mike's pulling this up to, you know, like we, sh like I showed in, um, you know, kind of my brief overview of the basics of generic inquiries, right? There's a lot of things that we can do as far as modifying the results grid and things like that. Um, and Mike showed you a little bit how, you know, when we have hyperlinks within that grid, how you can click and go to the customer itself. But we're going to walk through how to exactly change that navigation to navigate to a different screen, right, Mike? That's exactly right. So what we're going to do here is we're going to, within the generic inquiry, we're going to go to the navigation tab. I'm going to add another uh, navigation target, and I'm going to select the uh, customer details. That's AR 40... 20. 20. <laughs> I'm going to set this Windows mode here, which allows us to, instead of um, uh, overlapping the um, generic inquiry, we're going to um, have this be a pop-up window. So I can change the behavior of how that, that generic inquiry is going to, or I'm sorry, the customer details screen is going to present itself. So we could make that be in a new tab, but I like the pop-up window for this. I think it follows what the, what the action does already. And I like oh. that they give you those window mode options because I always feel like I have my preferences, you might have yours, and the client or the end user can have their preferences too. Usually whichever way I assume they're going to want it, they want it the other way, but it's nice to be able to change that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to set the, uh, the parameters here, the account CD. I'm sorry, it's customer ID.
gets linked to the customer B account ID. Next thing I'm going to do is in the results grid, I'm going to say that that account code here navigates instead of to customers, which is the default, I'm going to oh, navigate to that customer detail screen. Go I ahead. I have a question from um, Arlene. She asked, how do we know which field to add to the parameter? So a quick thing about that, um, Arlene, is, or I hope I'm saying your name correctly, um, is that if you, I don't know if you caught my session yesterday, but I would really advise, you know, when you're repointing it to a different screen, we talked about using inspect element to identify what that field name is and what the parameter is. So essentially in this navigation parameters, you're looking at the field um, from the GI that you're looking at and also the parameter in the screen that you're pointing to, correct? I think I said that properly. That's right. exactly right. This is where We're um, just trying to link those. This two. is what you're. This is what you're pointing to. So it, okay. and then this is where um, where you're getting the data from the the generic inquiry itself. Right. So if you and just click on that field portion in the first part, Mike, you'll notice that um, that says form filter and it's customer ID. So that would be the filter on that screen, and then the the field from the customer details. Let's yeah, see how that... that's what I would do, Arlene. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Inspect element, I would try that. I always use that inspect element for that. Or if it's a GI that you're pointing to when you're doing the navigation, you could go into that GI itself and see that field in the results grid. Okay. So now when we click on the customer, instead of opening the customer, it's going to open up the customer details, showing us those the detail of those two invoices that are represented in the in, in, in the customer balance. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's nice. It's a it's a it's a nice little pop up. Um, but sometimes people don't want to leave the GI. They want to stay in the GI. And so um, instead, what we're going to try to do to, to give us that same information is we're going to add a side panel. Um, so we're going to go back to our generic inquiry. In this case, I, I stole my friend Tim's idea, which is to have some of this pre-built so we can do, go a little faster. And so I have a different navigation target here that's looking at a generic inquiry that that's, I wrote called Open Invoices. And the Windows mode is set to be side panel. And so I'm going to create a side panel on the side of that, that generic inquiry that's going to um, open up another inquiry um, tying the, the, the customer accounts together. So I'm going to save that out and take a look at that. My friend Kurt calls these slide panels, and I really like that because I, I like that feel of it sliding open. I and always so I slide them open, and then I make them even bigger too. Like I, I slide them, and then I hit the the square up in the upper right hand corner. Oh, so that it it expands all the way through. Yeah, <laughs> bigger. It's just my bad eyesight, anyway. <laughs> So this is a this is a great way to be able to see um, the the detail and stay um, and, and stay within the reference of the uh, of the screen itself. Yeah, I really like those features, and sometimes they're a bit underutilized, especially if you've been on Acumatica for a number of years, and maybe you have existing generic inquiries, and you know. It wouldn't automatically add side panels to GIs, you know, but it's definitely something to kind of think about since they've, you know, added this feature a couple of versions ago. You know, if you have generic inquiries in your system, you can go through and add side panels to those. I created a, a, a different side panel here called customer contacts uh, with that with that same concept that, that way, as I'm calling about these open invoices, uh, I can identify who it is I need to call and pick up the phone 
right from here and um, and 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 call Amelia and see where we are on that um, uh, on those open invoices. So so let's say I'm this collections person and I'm using the customer summary and I can see the contacts. Um, is there a way that we can easily make it so that when I, let's say they need a copy of an invoice, can we easily print the invoice from the GI as well? That's a grand idea, Nicole. This is that um, open invoices GI that, that we're opening on, on the side panel. And what, what we did here for this is we went to our navigation tab in this GI and we're navigated out to the uh, to the invoice form itself, AR sixty four one thousand. Um, I use the Windows mode again as a pop up window, and the the, the keys to that are the uh, document type and the and the reference number. So I'm passing those parameters through from my uh, Open Invoices GI to the uh, to to the report itself. That way, when I look at my customer summary. And I open up my side panel for uh, for the invoice detail. I have this little. I apologize. I did that too fast, didn't I? Because I didn't show what I did on the other side. So we created the navigation over here to the invoice memo, and then in the results grid, I created a a results field that I just called print invoice and put a little caption for print. And then I navigated to that, um, that AR64-1000 that I, that I defined in the, uh, in the navigation tab. So that way, when we're in our favorite customer summary and we open up our side panel to see the invoice detail, we can click on that little hyperlink and it's going to navigate to the invoice form and we can print that out. And if we need to, we can send that to the uh, person we're talking to about the open invoices. Uh, I love doing that. As you know, in generic inquiries, <laughs> we've utilized that for several of our customers too. I mean, we've done that where, let's say they have a list of production orders and they want to be able to print pick tickets, right? You can just add a hyperlink right in the GI so that it pops open that printing form so that you can see those documents. So really cool way to utilize that feature. Pick tickets, man, for sure. Those darn pick tickets. Um, <laughs> um, so what about, um, what if you're not happy with a response from the customer and you want to be able to put them on credit hold? Um, that's a grand idea too. If we go into back into our customer summary generic inquiry, and we go to the entry point screen, uh, the first thing that we need to do to be able to, uh, to to affect what we want to do to put them on credit hold is to uh, is to say what screen will this generic inquiry. Um, uh, what's the entry screen that we're going to interact with. In this case, I, we selected the customer's uh, screen, the um, AR33000. When we have a entry screen defined, we can now select, in this case, mass actions on records. And when we select that, we get a new tab called mass actions. We can select then an action from that screen. So you can picture the customer screen and the actions that are set there, or you could just go there and, and check that out. One of those actions is called credit hold. So we can uh, record that and or enter that and save this. When we go back to our customer summary generic inquiry, we now have a checkbox uh, available to us because we've defined mass actions. When we click on a, a customer who has a balance that we're not very happy with and we want to put them on credit hold, we can mark that customer, go to actions and select credit hold. And you'll see that we've now marked this customer to be on credit hold. Very cool. 
really cool way to like kind of combine a whole bunch of different concepts in a relatively simple GI and a GI that's already in Acumatica out of the box, right? We're just taking that functionality and expanding upon it. Exactly. Okay, so last question, right? Is um, what if there's a small balance that I need to write off, but the write off balance is set too low and I want to modify their their write off allowance, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, it happens a lot when we're doing collections and we've, we're looking at these open invoices and we see that a, a, a customer, we have this uh, beauty school here. Of course, I can't see it now. Um, that, that, has a, uh, that has a small, um, it has a small balance, but their small balance uh, value is too low. And so what we could do is we could set a a different entry point. Again, this entry point will be available if we have an entry screen defined. Um, but in this case, we're going to select uh, Enable Mass Record Updates. That's going to pop up another, another field, another tab called Mass Update Fields. And we can select that right off limits. Save that. I always hit enter there and that causes another row to I do too. generate. Yeah. I'm not sure how, what behavior I need to do to move off of that field. But we just got an idea how to move off that field elegantly. You can drop that in the chat. Um, so we have a, a we have a a customer that maybe we want to write off more than ten dollars because they're open invoices. Uh, uh, there are a couple invoices that are more than ten dollars that we want to write off. We can simply again click on the um, on the selector, and under actions, now we have an update action. If we had multiple fields defined in that um, in in that tab, we could actually select more than one field. In this case, we're just going to change the write-off limits to be $100. And now the you can see we've changed the write-off limit to be $100. Now we could go in and, and, and write off a couple small invoices uh, for, that, uh, for that customer. Nicole, back to you. So this really kind of creates like a very robust process, um, you know, very flexible process too, in which we can, you know, really streamline that correction or collections process, not corrections. We can correct the collections process is what we can do. <laughs> um, oh, James um, said tab when you're in that and Arlene said tab off of that. I think they were talking about that uh that field in the uh I think it's in entry point maybe there. Let's just try it to see. Did you tab? So I'm selecting enable write offs. No, I just have to not more not move off of it. Gotta catch it. Yeah. So we still have a few more minutes here. I don't know if anyone has any questions or maybe, um, you know, Mike, I don't know if you have any other examples of any sort of advanced GI things that we might want to touch on. Um, I don't know if you have them prepared in your GI, but. Um, I, I actually do, but Arlene, I wanted to, to also, if people have questions, I want to be able to answer Arlene them. said, can we revisit the invoice print? So just take mm -hmm. another look at that again. So this is the generic inquiry that supports the, um, that supports the open invoices. And um, we have a column here that then prints the invoices. And what we did here was we first defined uh, the navigation itself. So we created um, navigation to the uh, invoice memo um, printed report. 
So that's the AR64-1000. That's the form itself. We set the Windows mode to be uh, pop-up. And then we uh, defined the navigation parameters. The, the key for that report is the document type and the reference number. So we're passing the document type and reference number from the generic inquiry into the invoice um, memo report. Then on the results grid, I created a, a line um, that I just called print invoice, gave it a caption, and then I, and then I defined the, that, that, say, that navigation, I'm sorry, I selected that navigation that we defined back in the, um, in the navigation tab. So then when we, and I can do this right from this inquiry too, when we view this inquiry, this is showing us all of our invoices that have a balance greater than zero. I just click on that, um, that row, and it passes through that invoice number um, and that reference number to the invoice report. So we can just print the invoice right from here. And as Nicole was saying, we, we do this a lot with sales order forms and, and, and picking sheets and packing lists and um, you know, any report that people need to get uh, ad hoc um, right from a generic inquiry. Arlene also asked, how do I get the report keys? I'm not sure if you answered that, but um, I think what we mean is just the parameters. Right? Yeah. So the parameters for the report. Would the parameters be the same as if you were adding a related table? Yeah, great life application for on the flight invoices. Love this one. Glad you like that one, Arlene. I really love printing from generic inquiries too. Um, why don't you go to the, oh, you have it there. Sorry. That's Never. okay. So these are, so it's just the parameters that the report is asking for when the report is run. Yeah. So I do have another example, but again, I'm happy to answer the questions. Thanks, Arlene. Okay. I'm glad you liked that. Okay. So we talked about getting to this the, this open invoices um, you know, from the summary to the details a couple of different ways. Um, there, there is another way that um, I was reminded of um, uh, by my friend Kurt just the other day, and that is to um, to pop open that open invoices generic generic inquiry as a as a pop up. So there's a navigation um, that that I created that's opening um, a that open invoices uh, GI, um, and so I created uh, the navigation target to that GI. That this GI is asking for a, it has a filter that's asking for a customer number. So it's, it's asking for a customer. So I'm passing that customer number through um, to the filter from the, uh, from the generic, uh, from this base generic inquiry. Then in my navigation, I'm sorry, my results grid tab, I have a, um, a data field just called invoices. I'm going to activate that. And you can see I'm navigating to that open invoices um, by customer generic inquiry that I uh, marked in the or set up in the navigation. So now when I click on view inquiry, instead of opening this with a, a with a side panel, I can actually um, pop open the, um, the the open invoices um, generic inquiry so that I can um, interact with these a, a different way. Because as Nicole was pointing out, whatever way she and I decide that that we would want to interact with it the customer generally wants it a slightly different way. And so um, being able to um, you know, get to this detail effectively is the important thing. And so we're, we try to be as agnostic as we can about what's the, what, what's the best way to do it. But you can see I also put into this my favorite thing, which is then to print the invoice from here. <laughs> cool. Well, where, where is a good place to get started with learning how to use and create basic generic inquiries? That's a good question, John. I would say that probably one of the best places um, to start, and especially because it's um, free and anybody can sign up for it, would be to go out to the Acumatica Open University. Um, 
there are there is a course out on the Open University. Um, I, I think it's if, S. Is it still S one thirty? Yeah, I, I think it's S one thirty. Um, open University. It should be openui.acumatica.com. Um, if you're not familiar with that web address, I'll put it right there in the chat. Um, but there are some courses in there on reporting tools. Um, yep, S130 um, would probably be the best one to look at for that. And yes, also Tim Rodman, things on AUG forums. Um, but the open UI stuff is really sort of like gives you a good baseline. And then Tim can most certainly help out with advanced things and and the Acumatica community itself um, also has a lot of posts on um, on use of ge uh, generic inquiries and, and, and different uh, ideas for, for how to implement that. That's cool. Tim said he's working on an online course for generic inquiries and pivot tables. That's awesome and really good to know, Tim. Um, yeah, and the open UI stuff, it's pretty generic. You know, it's also one sided. Um, you know, um, but it is nice that you can, I think they have the ability to watch recordings and also you can uh, view, view like the course materials too, like PDFs. Sometimes I use that uh, S130, just the PDF. I keep it saved because sometimes I have to look different things up as reference. Um, so it's always nice to go out and just download it and control F in the PDF document to, to look for a specific example. So, and of course, Tim Rodman, <laughs> the, the master of reporting. Thanks. Actually, I've, I've, I have to be straight here. Tim's the one who taught me this trick about uh, printing invoices. Tim, I think you taught us how to do um, AR aging reports um, in the S-130 class at uh, Summit many years ago. Yeah. So I think, we're, I think we're just about up on time. Is that correct? Yeah, I think so. Uh, not sure what happened to Ama, but I think that we're um, we are we are at time. The, we are at time. Nicole, you guys have put together just a, a fabulous uh, environment, um, and, and and we're thrilled to the, with the with the participation. We're thrilled with what we've been able to share, and, and what we've been able to learn. So uh, thank so, so thank really you to glad. you and to all of and there's Alma. Uh, and thank you to, to all of the admins that, that have made this work. And thanks to our attendees who asked such great questions, and I'm glad you guys enjoyed the content. Um, so we have a couple of sessions coming up right now, too, right? We have, uh, who do we have right now? Uh, Velocity mm -hmm. and, or no, I could be wrong. No, it, it is Velocity. You're totally right, Nicole. That's what's coming up next. And then uh, followed closely behind Velocity is going to be the um, break time. And today's break, we're also going to be heading to the networking tab to do some network speed dating. So head on over to the Velocity session and then um, either the stage or the networking tab after that. Have fun. Thanks, guys. Cheers to you all. Thanks, Mike.